Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. The next installment in my wardrobe refresh was another skirt. I knew skirts could be really comfortable, versatile and easily have a vintage vibe. I already had this vintage Vogue pattern in my stash and decided this was the time to use it. This pattern is dated to 1949 and consists of a four panel skirt with pleats at the front and inbuilt pockets. For this, I decided to use the leftover fabric from my other skirt. I will link that video down below. I have plenty of fabric left and I'm very fond of this fabric as it has a really nice weight. This is a wool blend I got very affordably, only for £5 per meter. I think I used about 2 meters for this since I was using leftover, I'm not sure. I think I bought this pattern in a vintage market and I had a really pleasant surprise when I opened it. The pattern was still pinned, pinned in places with very old, rusty and crooked pins. I felt like I found a little piece of history and I loved knowing this pattern had been used before. If you have not worked with the vintage pattern before, the pattern is imprinted. Instead, it has notches and holes which are described in the instructions to signify darts, grain and pleats. The pattern for this is super simple. There is one back piece, one front piece and a belt. You need to cut two of the front and back and one of the belt. If you have drafting experience, I think this would be an easy skirt to draft too. I carefully positioned my pattern pieces on the fabric, checking the circles that indicated grain and then I pinned it in place. I used my most delicate pins for this, as the paper is quite fragile. I had to do some sizes changes, as vintage patterns are printed in a single size. This one was for a 26 inch waist, where mine is more around 30. Because the pockets are inbuilt in the side seams, I thought it would be less fiddly to add 1 inch at the centre front and the centre back, which would give me an extra 4 inches all the way around. I added this after pinning my pattern in place, tracing my new cutting line in chalk. I also made sure I marked all notches in preparation with a chalk pencil, and then cut my pattern pieces out. Now that I had my pieces, I wasn't confident that the chalk pencil would stay on while I worked, so I put a pin on all the markings and then marked them with thread. The first step was to sew the darts in the back pieces. I pinned them carefully and then sewed them by machine. I then sewed the centre fronts together. The side seams are done in two steps. First you sew them beneath the pocket and then the pockets. Pin the seams together and sewed from the marking on the pocket downwards.
I then maneuvered it on my machine and sewed from the top to the pocket mark again. I think this order of steps gave me a really smooth seam. To finish the main seams, I pressed the seam open and then trimmed one side of the seam allowance. I then folded the longer seam allowance under the under and over, encasing the shorter side and pressed this with my iron. I then top stitched this in place. This is called a flat felt seam. I did this for the other side seams too, but only beneath the pocket. I did the pocket bit by hand. The next step was to pleat the skirt. Quick break from the music, um, just because I am now on step five of this pattern, and it's a bit about pleating the skirt, and I've just done it wrong, so I thought it might be worth bringing it up. <laughs> um, I got really confused because I didn't know what it meant. Um, and I pleated it like this, where I did um, one side pleat facing towards the side seam on each side of the front. Um, but I was really confused because I was pretty sure that there was a pleat at the centre front in the design. And now I've understood. Um, so instead of pleating it like this, so the way it's marked is that there's two lines, um, a thread tacking, which equals circles on the actual pattern. Um, you can see these little thread tackles here. Um, instead of bringing them together into a pleat, you're meant to bring the first line over to the center front to make one pleat, and then the other line over to the back panel, encasing the side seam and the pocket into another pleat. It probably doesn't make a lot of sense unless you've got the pattern in front of you, uh, but just in case one of you does find the pattern and wants to do this, um, I thought it might be useful. Oh, you guys, I'm so dumb. I was just whinging about doing the pleats wrong, but Vogue's got me because they drew little arrows on the pleat marks on this diagram to know where it goes and I just didn't look up. Idiot. Once I had the pleats figured out, I basted them into place. then sewed up the back seam. I also set in the zipper. I have no advice for this as zippers are still the bane of my existence. I would take hands on eyelets every day. I finished the zipper seam allowances by turning the skirt seam allowance under and overcasting it, along with the zipper edge.
belt is just the waistband, which is pressed in half along the long edge. I had to finish the short edges first by sewing them right sides together until a marked notch, about an inch into the long edge, making an L shape. I then basted the belt to the top of the skirt on the right side and stitched it by machine. This is then turned over to the wrong side and the seam allowance tucked under and pinned into place. I then hand stitched this in place with the whip stitch. The last step was the hem. I decided I couldn't be bothered with the instructions, which was bad because if I had followed the instructions I think the hem would have a little bit more weight and it would hang even better. Instead I tried this cut on and marked where I would like the hem and then chopped off the excess. With my machine, I turned under the hem by a quarter of an inch and sewed it down. I then ironed that and turned it under again, stitching. This gives me a neatly finished half an inch hem. The last step was to add a button to the little flaps of the belt that overlap in the back. I cut the marking of the buttonhole and fray checked it. I then did a buttonhole stitch by hand. I will link a video in the description with a great tutorial. I really enjoyed doing this by hand. I then hand sewed a wooden button on the other side and it was done. I really like this skirt. One alteration I would do though is to make the pockets bigger and deeper, as the 1949 version does not aptly contain my 2020 communications device. I think this is a great pattern, super versatile, and it has a subtle vintage vibe, perfect for history and bounding every day. Thank you for watching.